You see, folks, there are times when we need to stand still, when we just need to be quiet, when we just need to wait in God's presence and say, oh God, I see no way out of this, but I will wait in your presence. I will give thanksgiving unto the Lord. I will be faithful and obedient, and I will trust the Lord with all of my heart. I'd like you to turn to Proverbs chapter 3. We're going to read verses 5 and 6 as we speak on the topic, God is in control. God is in control. I want to tell you, you can look around the world today, but you can see that God is in control. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Heavenly Father, Lord, we bring this message to you. Lord, we pray over this message. Lord, I pray that if I'm in the way, Lord, that you would speak in spite of me and that you would minister the word of God in power and in might, uh, Lord, and in your strength. Lord, we give this message to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. You know, I believe I told you last week that when Abraham Lincoln was assassinated, that there was weeping and mourning and people were crying and someone climbed up the steps there in Washington, D.C. and a man yelled, God still reigns over Washington. And he yelled again, God still reigns over Washington. And it began to take hold and it began to be a part of them you know, with all that's going on with the Supreme Court decision last week, you know, there are many people that are wondering what does the future hold? And that question was left open, was not answered. Will churches, will pastors be forced uh, to provide services for same-sex marriage? Will, will they be required to make their church available. There are many questions that are open and that are, are before us. You know, it makes me wonder if America is not on a slippery slope. You know, our nation, all of our people are not always Christian, but our nation has had Christian laws and our, it has been based upon the common law, which was based upon the Word of God, and our laws were Christian laws, and our people, by and large, were generally Christian. And we have, we have seen this, and America has been blessed in everything we have ever done. In World War II, we had prayer meetings and fastings, uh, and God delivered America and provided for its troops. But for the first time, the U.S. Supreme Court said we will not obey God's law. We will do our way, what we have chosen, and we will impose this on the entire land as a constitutional right. Uncle Sam is slipping down a slope that he thought he could go just a little piece but he's going to find that he cannot stop. Uh, the hand of God is going to be lifted off of America. Many people today have personal issues, lost jobs, lost jobs and, and uh, 
financial situations, homes, legal matters, all kinds of things that bring uncertainty. But I'm here to tell you this morning, God is in control. God is in control. The Bible in Philippians says, be not overly anxious about these things, but bring them with prayer and supplication and with thanksgiving unto the Lord and let the Lord rule and reign and let the peace of God rule and reign in your heart and in your life. You know, we let our minds go 90 miles an hour. I've I've done that. I don't know about you, but I have. I've let my mind go about 90 miles an hour trying to figure everything out. Figuring, reasoning, worrying, manipulating, trying to come up with things. And in the natural, there may not be a way out. I think of Moses at the Red Sea. You know, uh, they, they had just been delivered. They had just been delivered. They're at the Red Sea. They look, the Red Sea is behind them. They look back and Pharaoh and all of his chariots are on the hillside ready to attack. Now that's a precarious place because the children of Israel didn't have any real weapons. And here they are. And they, these are people of faith. These are real people of faith, right? They come to Moses and say, were there not enough graves in Egypt? You had to bring us out here into the desert so you could bury us out here? Hey, we were better off there serving them than coming out here. And what does Moses do? Moses speaks to the people and says, be still. I believe he says in one version, stand still and see the deliverance of the Lord. You see, folks, there are times when we need to stand still, when we just need to be quiet, when we just need to wait in God's presence and say, oh God, I see no way out of this, but I will wait in your presence I will give thanksgiving unto the Lord. I will be faithful and obedient and I will trust the Lord with all of my heart. Amen. Amen. You know, we lose first, we lose our peace because we can't see anything happening. We can't. But God is still working behind the scenes. He's still there. You may not see him right now. You may be looking and say, I don't see God. But God is working behind the scenes in your life. I think of Joseph. Joseph had another spirit. Had another spirit. And Joseph is sold into slavery. And he's carried down to Egypt. And Potiphar buys him as a slave. And what happens? Joseph goes straight to the top. I mean, phew! And Potiphar trusted Joseph so much that he put the whole plantation under his hand. Read it. It says, and concerned himself with nothing but what he ate. Now that means he just gave it all to Joseph. And Joseph was there and Joseph... Potiphar's wife came along and and tempted him and he remained strong and she falsely accuses Joseph and has him cast into the prison. Oh man, things are going from bad to worse. I mean, first he's sold into slavery. Now he's cast into prison. And then in prison, he rises to the top. He's a trustee, the head trustee. He's in charge of the prison. And he has a dream. He tells them the dream. He says, now they're going to let me out. And what happens? They forget him. Have you ever been forgotten? Have you ever felt like you were just forgotten? 
And they left him there for three long years. Joseph could have said, man, I guess I am snake bit. Nothing's ever going to turn out right for me. I might as well just give up and quit and be in prison. But you know what? All the while, God was working behind the scenes. He was setting the stage, preparing Joseph for rulership, preparing him, having him suffer and grow and accomplish and to be all that he could be. You know, it's so easy to quit when you don't understand the plan, when you don't know what's going on. You can't see God's hand. Joseph could not see God anywhere. There was nothing. He said, I, I'm, I'm at the bottom. I'm at the bottom. But God's hand was working and moving and Joseph was raised to the top. He went from the pit to the palace in one day and became the ruler of Egypt. Genesis 45 and 5. Genesis 45. He says, For God did send me before you to preserve life, and this is the will and the plan of God. In Philippians chapter 2, verse 13, he says, It is God who is in all the while working in you to bring about His will. Now that's Paul. Paul was in prison. He was, everything was going wrong. He was locked up. He was there, but he said, It is God who all the while is working in you to bring it to pass. And he said, what has happened to me has worked out to the furtherance of the gospel. And now it is in the palace and in all places, he says. Bless God, he says. God is at work. You know, you can stand in these battles and you can say, bless God. God is at work in my life. You know, Esther demonstrates that God is already preparing solutions to problems that you don't even know about yet. I mean, Haman, the Agagite, who was an Amalekite, who hated Israel, God saw him ahead and God said, Whoop, I'm going to do something. And God called Vashti and he caused her to, to, to leave the queenship. He gave somebody a great idea. said, let's have a beauty pageant. I'll pick the most beautiful. The king said, this is a great idea. Have a great beauty pageant. And guess who wins? Esther, a little Jewish girl, was put in the palace. And as the story unfolds, they come to Esther and they say, for such a time as this, you were brought into the kingdom to save God's people and God will do His will. I want to tell you, there are people behind the scenes. God is lining up people right now for you. God is lining up the right people at the right place at the right time. You may not know it, but He's putting them in place on your behalf to speak for you, and to bring about a great victory. Amen. 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 It's great to know that God was working far beyond Esther. He was working to bring everything to pass. It's so easy to be negative. It really is to be defeated, anxious, fearful. But you know what God said? They came to God and the, the fig tree had been cursed and, and they were there and they said, we don't understand. We, we don't understand this. And Jesus said, have faith in God. Have faith in God. Believe that God is able, that God has a plan. Have faith in God. Uh, folks, it's the New Testament dilemma. I like in uh, John, I believe it's chapter 8, but 
They're facing the, the dilemma. They're facing about 10,000 people with no food, no, nothing. And, and Jesus comes to the disciples and says, give them something to eat. And they go, we don't have anything to eat. There are no stores. What's their solution? Send them away. Tell them to go home and eat. Go, go away. But you know what the, the little verse in John says? It says, Jesus already knew what he would do. He wasn't caught off guard. He didn't say, oh man, I've got 10,000 people in no stores out here. What are we going to do? He already knew what he would do. God is ahead. God is leading. God is moving. There was a man who had terminal cancer. It was a fast-growing, aggressive kind of cancer. The doctor had given him three months to live. He was, he was distraught, worried, making plans. But his four-year-old son came to him. Four-year-old son had a Bible open and had his finger on a verse. And, it, and the little boy couldn't read a lick. He sure couldn't read a King James Bible. But he said, hey, Dad, Jesus told me to have you read this verse and had his finger on a verse. So the dad took the Bible and his finger was on John chapter 11, verse 4. A verse that said, This sickness shall not end in death, but it is for the glory of God. And the father recovered from the cancer. He recovered miraculously and he's still alive today because God is faithful and God has everything under control. <laughs> Secondly, we need to trust in the Lord with all of our heart. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. You cannot worry and believe at the same time. You can't worry, I'm going to say that again, you can't worry and believe they're opposites. If you're believing, you're not worrying. And you know the thought process is in your mind. Satan is popping, popping, popping. Oh, oh man, what am I going to do? What about that bill? What about, what about my family? What about this? What about that? All these things. You know what? Uh, I believe it's uh, Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 5. He says, he says, casting down the imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Jesus Christ. He said, don't let Satan run wild in your mind with all kinds of things, but bring them into captivity unto the knowledge of Jesus Christ and that Jesus is Lord and has everything under control. Amen. He has everything under control. I may not can see the way out. I may not know the way out. But I can relax because I know that God is the answer and Jesus is the way. That's what it means to be more than conqueror. It means to conquer the giants, to defeat the enemy. You can be at perfect peace in the storm. There can be a great storm and there's a cleft up in the rock. And there's a little bird up in the cleft. And the trees are bending and swaying. And folks, it could be that way in America very soon. The trees could be bending and swaying. And it could be, but the little bird is up in the cleft of the rock and is just singing to its heart content. And that is the picture of peace that God wants you to have in your life. He says, lean not to your own understanding. That does not mean that we're not to be intelligent or use common sense. 
doesn't mean we don't go to the doctor. Well, I'm not going to the doctor. I'm going to trust God. No, go to the doctor. If you're out of work, search for work. If, if, you're, if your family, try to heal it. You know, the, God provides worms for birds, but He doesn't throw them down their throat. They got to go out and look for them and get them. And he expects you to use common sense and intelligence and go get what he's given you. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. He says, go and receive and you will find. He says, go. You know, you're going to find. He, he doesn't want you to lay aside your understanding, but he does say there are times when your understanding will not be enough. When your understanding will not be sufficient. When there won't be any way out of the problem. And you look and you figure and you see no way out. And you say, oh man, what am I going to do? And God says, trust not in your own understanding. But trust in the Lord and have faith in Him. And let Him bring it to pass. The Lord loves you. Many people have health problems. Because their lives are negative. Fear filled with worry and anxiety. Always trying to figure things out. Always trying to get a, a grasp on it. How can I do this? Or they're trying to make it work according to their own plan. Trying to change God's plan. And reshape it to fit their needs. You know, there's a story, number three. There's a story in the... 2 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 12. Jehoshaphat is surrounded by three great armies. In the natural, there was no way. All these kings had come together. They had all come together to fight against him. And he didn't say, I see no armies. I do not see any armies. I'm confessing that. I'm confessing there are no armies. No, he didn't say that. He comes up to the Lord and he humbles himself and he goes to the altar and he said, Oh God, this great company, we have no might against this company that cometh against us. Neither know we what to do. I don't know what to do but my eyes are on you. And he leaves it with God. And he says, my God is able. He humbled his heart. He humbled himself and a nation before God. And God heard him. And God delivered this nation in a great way. The next verse, I believe, is 2 Chronicles chapter 20. Verse 15, and the Lord speaks to him, says, Be not afraid nor dismayed by reason of this great multitude, for the battle is not yours, but God's. The battle is the Lord's. I want you to say that with me, everybody. The battle is the Lord's. Let's say it again. The battle is the Lord's. It is his fight. And I want to tell you, I, I don't know if I gave this to Jerry, but 2 Chronicles chapter 20, I believe it's verse 20. And the Bible says, now this is the battle, and all these kings have come and gathered, and he's prayed, and he's got a word from God. How many of you can get a word from God? You can get a word from God. He got a word from God, said, don't fear, the battle is the Lord's. But nothing's happened. Nothing's happened. And he goes out with his little army, and the others are a great company. But you know what it says? And when they began to sing and praise the Lord, the Lord arose and fought for him, when you praise the Lord 
in the middle of the battle when nothing looks right, when it all looks wrong, but you praise God, then the Lord inhabits the praise of His saints and He arises and gives them the victory. Amen. Amen. They believe God. You know, you can put your eyes on man. You can put your eyes on the giants. Or you can say, our God is all-powerful. Our God is awesome. Our God parted the Red Sea. Our God uh, opened the blinded eyes. Uh, one angel killed 185,000 in one day. And God is not only for us, but He is with us. And He wants to live in us. He has destined us to be in victory. Not without trials, but we are more than conqueror for the battle is the Lord's. The battle is the Lord's. God loves you. He's numbered every hair on your head. That's more of a challenge for some of us than for others. Every tear you've cried, He's remembered. Here's the way the world would love for it to be. The Hebrew children, they said, bow down. Bow down to the gods of this world. Bow down to the gods of political correctness. Bow down to all of these. And, and all the people, the whole kingdom, bowed down. But the three Hebrew children stood ramrod straight. They stood ramrod straight. And when He gave them another chance, they said, We are not careful to answer Thee, O King, but we will not bow down to Your statue. We will stand. And it's time for the Christians of America to say, We are not careful to obey the laws of the land but it's better for us to obey God than man. We will not bow down to your statues. Amen. God didn't deliver them. He didn't deliver them outside of the fire. He had them go through the fire and delivered them in the fire. We may have to go through the fire. We may have to go through, Americans may have to go through the fire, but God will go with us and God's hand will be magnified because we went into the fire. And we will come out, we will come out as victors. We don't have to know how God is going to do it or when or why it happened in the first place, but we are to trust God with all of our hearts. Thank you.